quick video today because Audi has facelifted the 2025 Audi A3 sedan and honestly I don't think it is necessarily a more beautiful or elegant design than the previous one or the pre-facelift because I think the lower section here in the front end just doesn't look as good as the uh, the 2021 A3 so what we're gonna do in this video is of course go over this new facelift from a front to side and rear and also the interior small tweaks to the interior as well and i also made a uh, in-person review of the uh, a3 you can go and check that out on the sketch monkey channel if you want to do that i loved the car i did like the powertrain as well you have of course optional uh, quattro system for this a3 so before we jump into photoshop here let's have a look at the what this uh, facelift is all about from this article from car and driver also linked down below so along with revised front and rear ends the cheapest audi also gets new colors a revised center console and customizable daytime run and light signatures and car and driver here says that it looks slightly more modern than before and again i just i disagree with the modernness of this car as well i do prefer the pre-facelift 100 i'm gonna let you know why in just a minute so the interior tweaks include a new shifter and also change to the center console and dashboard the high performance s3 will receive a bigger change later on so you have a new grille that's wider than before along with a new front bumper audi is also starting to play around really heavily with the with the light signatures of their car so you have something that they call light signatures that allows you to customize the arrangement of the daytime run like so you can have uh, whatever expression in the front face i guess you, you want for your Audi, which I think is pretty cool. Audi has always been in the forefront when it comes to experimenting with the light designs ever since the uh, 2007 Audi R8. You also have new colors, progressive red, district green, and a matte version of the D Daytona Gray. I do think the matte version of the Daytona Gray sounds like a pretty cool color. You still have the 10.1 inch touchscreen infotainment uh, screen which remains and don't expect any changes to the powertrain which I said when I tested it I felt it was the perfect amount of power and just felt like the right drive tra train for this type of package and that is the 201 horsepower turbocharged 2 liter inline 4 and comes standard with front wheel drive but if I were to buy an a a A3 I would definitely option for the all wheel drive because I, I just want to have all wheel drive in an Audi and here you can see the new interior as well audi still makes some of the best looking interiors i'm glad they didn't switch a lot of things up in the interior here so let's jump into photoshop here quickly have a look at what's going on with this new audi first of all the thing is the the pre the pre-facelift you have to go with the black optics package because it just completely changes the front end of the design and here you can see what i'm talking about up top we do have the non black optics package you can see where we have this weird little silver piece down here that i don't feel suits the front end at all it just feels like it's the same thing with the a4 and the a5 they also have the black optics package that completely transforms the front end and they also all have some sort of weird little silver piece in the lower section but other than that it's a very beautiful looking design big headlights which is something we rarely see these days and we also have a very clear identity with the uh, uh, internal pieces of the headlights right here and down low you can see that we do have the black optics package and you see the change that you have with choosing this package it looks almost this could be this aggressiveness in the front end of the black optics package of the pre-facelift looks like it could actually be a uh, an audi s3 because of how aggressive this is this looks so much better than the non uh, black optics because we still have a silver piece here but it feels more natural to just have a bar like this instead of a, a squared off circle of just weird silver trim in the lower section now enough talk about that specific package and let's jump in to the front end and compare the new one to the old one so here you have the same uh, car that i just showed you with the black optics package available on this specific uh, a3 looking great we have these beautiful wings in the lower section and then looking at the new one here it definitely does not look as sporty as the pre facelift in my opinion because now we have this strange organic 
implementation of this black plastic trim right here in the corner that I this angle that I'm sketching right now I don't feel like it has any connection to any other piece in the front bend and you can see the difference here this angle definitely had the same angle as the grill which has a nice connection to between those two key graphics now this comes in and just turns it into some some more organic feel that again doesn't really have any sort of friend in the front end when it comes to the the key graphics of the front they also moved up the logo and it feels like they maybe moved down the the top part of the grill so you can see that the logo doesn't sit inside of the grill now now it sits right in the border up top and again i don't really think that is an improvement over the pre facelift i don't know let me know what you think but in my opinion this more rounded feel that we have in the lower section specifically of the new a3 it just does not look as good as the old version you also have a wider grill now so these corners stretch out farther to the sides than it did uh, previously and you have the ta the headlight having the same housing as before but we do have new internal pieces for the headlights so you do have this uh, signature LED, so you can customize, I guess, which of these LEDs light up. You can make some cool expressions in the front end. So looking at the side view here, now the A3 has one of the best looking side views of um, cars in this specific segment. And the reason being, it looks so muscular. And this is something that I show you in my in-person review in more detail, because it looks like an S3 model. Have a look at these beefy fenders that we have here this triangular piece going right here looking fantastic we also have the same vibe in the front end it looks like a wide body kit that's been added onto this car and by the way i also love this color this blue color of the pre-facelift looking very clean we have the silver trim going around the greenhouse in the pre-facelift now looking at the new one Again, look at the side view here and the front end, how this just becomes weaker. It doesn't look as aggressive and as strong as the pre-facelift up here with some very clean and chiseled lines that we have going on, looking fantastic. But other than that, you can barely see any changes for the side view. And this is, of course, a facelift, so side view and rear view are not necessarily uh, priorities when it comes to changing things. It's more about the, the interior pieces, but we still have a very clean... Uh, shoulder line typical Audi connecting to this beautiful integrated ducktail or or nail spoiler as Audi calls it you can see it more clearly here uh, just a very tight end point up top for the Audi looking fantastic lower section is also the same we still have the muscles here even though you can barely see it here in this uh, with this shading but they're still intact so you have the beefiness still available for the a3 in this case the trim around the greenhouse is now blacked out looking way better in my opinion than having them be uh, silver moving on to the rear view here and there are some changes again that uh, remove some of the sportiness that uh, that i want to see in an a3 because it is a sporty looking little sedan up top we do have the pre-facelift with these fake air vents in the lower section which I'm not a, a massive fan of because you can see it feels like it's just a, a hole in the bodywork. It doesn't have any chamfers going around it to make it feel welcomed in the rear end, if that makes sense. But up top, we still have, of course, the nail spoiler, one of Audi's key features that I think they do so well on pretty much every single model that they have. The taillight look fantastic as well. And have a look at this. We have a nice, beautiful, subtle uh, chamfer cutting right above the uh, taillights going through and of course coming back in the other side i also love this hockey stick design of the leds and the leds in general it has some dynamic feeling to it and further down low we have the exhaust pipes visible and this is a big change that they made with the facelift here because we don't have any type of exhaust pipes visible in the lower section and this is another reason why i prefer the pre-facelift this looks still pretty good but uh, i do still want to see the tailpipes maybe there is a package for the new a3 we can option to have them be visible like a sportier package i'm not entirely sure we also have new graphics internal pieces for the taillight graphics and again i just have to go back to the pre-facelift and the reason why i love this 
more than the current uh, facelift one is we don't have this hockey stick LED anymore. Instead, we have these small arrow pieces, which still looks pretty dynamic because you can see it goes from small here into larger at the very end. So we do have two lines that kind of goes uh, farther away from each other the farther out, the further out we go from the center point. The chamfer is still intact here, not changing any of the sheet metal bodyworks on this A3 and we don't have these fake uh, plastic pieces anymore. Instead, it's way better. This is one detail that I do like about the new A3. If we can just take, remove this wing here and take these exhaust pipes and move them down here, put them here, and then we would have a perfect facelifted lower section in my opinion for the new a3. I'm not entirely sure about the wings that sticks out like that in, in the lower section, but I'm glad that they removed the fake vent here and instead sort of incorporated that better in the lower section and created a, a larger looking diffuser and a much more subtle design without this specific piece in the corners. Now last but not least, there's, it's very very hard to see what the changes are here for the A3, but they said there are some changes. Maybe you can spot them, I don't think, honestly. I can, we do have one change here which is the gear selector, used to be this little toggle in the 2021 model year, and then if you look at the new one, they switched it up to uh, a different type of toggle I guess, still like pushing back and f or forward to <laughs> choose uh, reverse or drive, not sure if this is either you know an, an improvement, because I would rather grip the, the gear selector like this and push it back and forth instead of just pushing the end corners to put it into drive or reverse. But that's just me, we still have a lot of gloss black in the new one as you can see, but as I said, Audi is still doing some of the best 100% uh, looking interiors, because look at the design of the, the gauge cluster. Clear control panel housing for it here, a proper solid housing for it. And you have fully in a digital gauge cluster, and you can customize this as well. And that is another reason why I love Audi's infotainment screens and gauge clusters. It's fully customizable. You can have the map show up the entire screen if you want that, or you can have it more of a traditional layout like, like we have right here, tachometer to the left and speedometer to the right. They did say that they changed the air vents, but I can't see what they actually changed. Uh, it looks pretty similar to me, this design right here, like we have up here, it's just a different trim. This is silver here, while it is black on the facelift. The infotainment screen looks to be exactly the same as well. There is a little bit too much gloss black plastic in the interiors of Audi. That is one con that I'm gonna give out to Audi's interiors these days. I would much rather have uh, more of a matte finish on uh, some of these surfaces that we have in Audis. But overall, the steering wheel looks great as well. And the overall layout of the infotainment screen and the gauge cluster also look fantastic. And as I said, this is a very fun car to drive, even with the base uh, non-S model with the 201 horsepower. And again, if you want to learn more about the details and what I feel about this uh, design from an interior and exterior and also the driving experience, go and check out my full review on the SketchMonkey channel linked down below in the description.